All right, it's time to start learning how to code. Now we're gonna be starting really simple inside of GameMaker, picking up exactly where we left off two videos ago when we were just exploring GameMaker Studio. If you're jumping in and you haven't done that yet, let me show you what we've got so far because there's not a lot, but there's two things you're gonna need. First off, we have a sprite. This one is called SPR Player. It's just a circle with a smiley face in it. Then we also have an object called OBJ Player, and this object has that sprite attached to it. To do that, you just drag the sprite into it, or you can click right here on the sprite and navigate to where you have it, and it will be right there. Once you've got that, we have an object and we have a sprite. The sprite is what you see in your game. It's the image, it can be animated, it can be static, which means still, uh, but it's what you actually see. And then we have the object, which is what runs the code. Now, GameMaker Studio uses an event-driven system. And what that means is it has specific events, things like when an object is created or destroyed, or if you want to draw something, or if someone touches a screen or does a drag on it, because you can make mobile games here. If any of the events that GameMaker has registered is triggered and there is code inside of that event, then the code will run. So let's give that a try. Over here in our object, we're gonna click on add event. So there are a lot of different events inside of here. Some of them are fairly self-explanatory. Create, well, maybe not self-explanatory, but a little simpler than other ones. A create event occurs one time when the object is first being made. So code inside of here only gets run once. Destroy the opposite it gets run one time when we destroy it clean up we're not going to worry about i'm not going to touch on every single event here because as we get down to these ones there's actually a lot of different ones but the important ones are create step a step event you can think of as like a new frame has come into our game now if you're familiar with gaming you may have heard the term fps which stands for frames per second Game Maker uses 60 frames per second, and their word for the event is actually step. So there are 60 frames per second happening, so that means every single time uh, your game is running, for every second, 60 frames is being refreshed that quickly. Some games are at 30, some games are at 144, or even more, depending on the monitor you have, the hardware you've got, and what the game developer actually put in to allow the game to run at. But a good standard number is 60. So GameMaker went in and created an event called the step event. And the step event runs the same amount as your FPS. So for our game, it will check this event 60 times a second. This is where we put code for things like collisions and if we're checking for input on the keyboard or the mouse or the touch screen. We need to be checking as often as possible to, for these things, otherwise you can get stuck in that rock. Because imagine you're playing a game where you're moving and you only check to see if you're colliding with something every one second. And that might seem like a lot, but you can move really quickly in one second if you're jumping or falling or running or teleporting. You have to be checking that 60 times a second. So that's the step event. The draw event is very similar to the step in that it runs 60 times a second, but it is only used for drawing things onto the screen, which we'll touch on later. Then you also have things like mouse events. So this would be left press, left release, if you're holding it down, if it goes into and out of a section, stuff like that. Key down, key pressed, and key up are all keyboard events. Key down will check to see if a key is being held down. So this will also run 60 times a second. If you wanna have code that checks to see if you're holding the right arrow key down, and if you are, you move, well, you'd put it in a key down. If you want to check to see if they press the A key one time, you'd put it in key pressed or key up. 
Key pressed happens once when it goes down. Key up happens once when the key is released. Then we also have things like gesture. We have specific collision events. We also have other, which we're not going to touch on, and asynchronous events, which we're also not going to touch on. So all I want to do is make a create event. So when we make that and we click on it, it brings up this whole section right here. So it adds the event right here, and then it brings up a window with code in that we can write in. Now, we have some green code, some green words in here already. So this isn't really code, this is actually notes, or more specifically, they're called comments. So when it's green like this, we can type whatever we want and the computer will just ignore it. So anything we put in there is going to be ignored by the computer. It's not going to try to run it. This is useful for us. Now, what is really useful as well is this description part is we can actually say, uh, well, we can say whatever we want, but if we keep this at description up here, it actually changes it over here in the event. And that's really handy. Now, the default with like the insert description and type your comments here, I find that really obnoxious. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to change that. So we haven't even started coding yet, but we found something, or at least I found something that I don't like. And the beautiful thing is in IDEs and game engines, they give you so much power and flexibility. So if we go into file, preferences up here in the top left, you can see here that there are a lot of options that we can change. So we can change how Game Maker looks, we can change the size, we can change what comes up by default and all of this. So we wanna change one default in here and this is gonna be in the object editor. So we click on this right here and now we can see how we actually open things up. So we can do a single click or a double click, which is something I didn't actually know this I might point out. If you find double clicking to be obnoxious, you can change it to a single click. Very useful. But what I wanna do is right down here, this is what gets added in every single time we make an event. So I'm gonna highlight everything except the at description, delete it, and then press enter one time. This will give us a second line inside of our code. That way we don't always have to press enter. Now, if I press apply, and OK, let's just add a second event. Doesn't matter what it is, we're going to delete it. I'll just add a create event or a destroy event here. And you can see that now we have a, two lines in here and the description is empty. So adding in that extra line actually gives us a third one, which for me, I actually like to leave one line right here just as a buffer between the description and when I start coding. So this works really well for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click on the destroy event. So if we left click, it doesn't do anything. If we right click, it brings up this context menu and we can delete it. If you don't delete it, that's eh, not a big deal. We're not gonna put any code in there so it won't run, but it's good to only have events that actually have code in your objects. Otherwise, when you're looking through them, it can get a little confusing. Just a quick side note, if you encounter any errors, keep trying to go through with the video and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post a video uh, after this that's gonna cover all of the possible things that could have gone wrong. So keep following along, try to get it. If not, go into the next video where I'm gonna cover, I think, everything that could have gone wrong for you. So we have an object, we've got a create event. The create event runs one time, and right now we have nothing inside of here except a comment. I'm gonna press enter to give me that one line buffer that I like, and now we're going to type speed equals five, and then we're gonna put a semicolon. And I'm gonna press F8 to enlarge this so that you can see it really easy, F8 enlarges the code size on your screen, F7 will make it smaller. So let's break down what this one line of code is doing. First off, 
we have color coordination. Super handy and very nice. You can change the colors. I would not recommend doing that if you're following along. Once you're super comfortable in Game Maker, go ahead and you can change colors however much you want. But if you're following along or you're pasting images for someone else to help you debug or something like that, if you've got custom colors in there, it makes it really hard to know what is what. So this green right here, this is a built-in variable. A variable is a piece of data. It holds information about our object, about our room, about our game. It holds information. This one is one that GameMaker itself created, sets, and can update based on different factors. But we can both read it, so we can get the value, and we can set it like we're doing right here. So we are telling GameMaker, hey, you know that built-in variable called speed? We want to set it, which is what one equal sign does. We want to set that to five. And then this semicolon uh, right next to L, you don't need to hold shift. It's the default semicolon, uh, just the default button press. This is like a period to a computer. So you press that, GameMaker says, okay, this line of code is now done. I won't look any further. GameMaker is very lax in their programming language. If you don't put a semicolon, no problem. If you don't put any spaces between this equals, no problem. I do these things because it's what I have always done and I find it much more legible. If you don't use semicolons, it will get you into trouble in pretty much every other programming language out there. And sometimes it will get you in trouble in GameMaker too. So it is always a good idea to be putting semicolons and spaces as you type your code. I tend to think that I have really nice legible code. So follow along with me, even if some of it doesn't make sense, uh, it will help you learn to read your code, other people's codes, and for other people to read your code if you ever ask for help. So this sentence right here is your first line of code. And the way we would read it is speed equals five. So we're setting speed to five. Now, speed controls the speed, the movement of our object. So by default, speed is set at zero. We are changing it to five. So now if we open up our room, that's the other thing we did for anyone who did not watch other videos, we did put our player in our room. So if you need to, uh, you can minimize the docks here on the side with these little uh, arrows on the right and the left, or you can press F12, which is also super handy, and that will bring up most of them, uh, sometimes all of them, but sometimes not all of them. So we dragged our player into our room. If you drag your player into your room and it shows up, perfect. If you try to drag your player into your room and it gives you an error, that means you're actually bringing in a sprite, so you don't want to do that or you don't have your instances layer selected and it wants to create a new one, that's also not okay. So make sure you have instances selected here and you can drag your player in. You can select and press delete to get rid of it because you only need one. So with the one line of code we've got, we can now run our game. If you remember, it is this triangle up here or F5 and our player object is now going to glide across the screen and off into infinity because it's actually never going to stop. Just because we can't see it doesn't mean it isn't moving. So there's your first line of code. And let's go back to our workspace. We have tabs up here. So room is here. This tab is over here. So we've set speed to five. Speed it tells it how many pixels per frame to move. That means that when we set it to five, it's gonna move five pixels per frame. Now, the other question is, how does it know which way to move? Because right now, it's moving to the right. But we didn't tell it to. And that's because the direction of our player also has a default. It also has a variable. So if I say direction, you can see it comes up here as green, and this right here is the autofill, which is super, super handy. So 
we can actually look at it and say this is a built-in variable because it says that. Then we have functions down here with the word direction in them. Ignore those for now. But this built-in variable called direction controls which way our player actually goes. So if we set this equal to 90 with a semicolon after, we can control which way it goes. Now to imagine and to know how this is actually going to function, let's go back into our room for a second. So I'm gonna draw you a really crude example. I'll take a quick screenshot of what we got right here. And now in here, GameMaker has direction built in like this. So imagine we have a circle. That's actually not that bad of a circle. This is zero to game maker. Going to the right is zero. Going directly up is 90. Going directly to the left is 180. And going directly down is 270. And then you have all the numbers in between. So zero to 89.999 repeating indefinitely is between right here and so on for each of these. So when we wanna change the direction, this is what you've gotta think about. To go to the right is zero, up is 90, left, oh, I sure hope my camera is actually pointing the right way here. Uh, left is 180, down is 270. So over here, we just said direction equals 90. So I'm gonna press F5 and run this now and you should be able to tell it's going to go up. So with direction, we can now change this whichever way we want. So if I said 156.82, just a random number, and we throw that in, it's gonna move that way. Now to know about direction, one thing to know about direction is we could change this to like 500. So it's gonna start at zero, go all the way around to 360, and then it's gonna bump up 140, and that's 500 to it. So if we wanted to do 720, this is actually gonna be pretty much directly to the right, because it's zero to 360, and then zero to 360 again. That's so 360 plus 360 is 720. So direction, zero right, up 90, left 180, down 270. So by default, it's zero, but we can change that to whatever we want. And this is your first foray into coding. This is writing code, this is GML, this is the same kind of syntax, which is, stands for like what you're actually gonna see, the, what you type on here. This is the same kind of syntax for almost every single language. You're going to put a variable on the left, you're going to assign it data. That data is right here. And then you end that assignment with a semicolon. So this is real code doing something really useful in your game. You wanna get up and moving, this is how you do it. Now, if we change the speed, we can play around with these two settings and there it goes. So anything above like 25, 20, it's gonna be really hard to see because our room isn't huge and we just fly off the screen. But that's okay. This is all I wanted to do right here, right now. So if you have any questions, if something doesn't make sense, if I went too fast, let me know. Remember, if you're confused, someone else is confused. And I can help you guys, but you gotta let me know. So I hope this made sense. I hope you've got a player object moving in your game world because that's the beginning. That's how we're gonna start. Next up, we're going to look at doing something a little more interesting and being able to actually control our player at will and not just have them fly off the screen. We're gonna tackle that next video by adding some more events and discussing some more code with our own variables, not just game makers as well. So I'll see you then, and as always, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later.